In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to read Facebook ad analytics when it comes to running your lead campaigns. Let's get started right away. I'm going to show you what analytics you actually want to be paying attention to. So let's go to customize columns and let's get rid of uh, bid strategy. Let's get rid of last significant edit, attribution setting, quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, conversion rate ranking, get rid of all three of those, get rid of ends and get rid of schedule. If you want reasonings for these, comment below, but I described the reasoning in more detail in the video right before this, which is how to look at Facebook ad analytics for a sales campaign, so you can piggyback off of that one. This one, though, I'm going to go right into just showing you what you need to know. We're going to add CPM. We're also going to add CTR, but we're going to add that second one there, link click-through rate. We're going to add frequency. We're going to add cost per post engagement. You can just type in post and then cost per post engagement. We're going to use that one. And one more that you might use would be add to cart. So just go ahead and click total on add to cart and off check those other two. And then let's bring frequency to the very bottom and let's bring add to cart up to near results. Now, why you might want to do add to cart for a lot of you, you're not going to do this. If you're doing instant forms, the add to cart's going to mean nothing, but the add to cart is good. If you are doing a, ob, uh, a, but the add to cart is good if you are using a web page for your landing page to collect the lead. And then we can set an action before they fill out the entire form as an add to cart, just kind of a way to track how many people are getting through like half of the process once they get over to your website. So I'm going to put add to cart in there. Let's go to save as column preset and call it leads. And now let's look at some of this data here and talk about how we would analyze it. So reach and impressions, the difference between this reach is the amount of different accounts that saw your ad and impressions is the total amount of times that it's shown. So 8,332 different people have seen the ad 21,262 times is what that would mean. Cost per lead is what is going on in this column. Amount spent, uh, self-explanatory. CPM is your cost to show an ad to 1,000 people, or not 1,000 people, but 1,000 times. And this will get cheaper the more that Facebook likes your ad. So this is something that we might analyze as far as the content goes. And then click-through rate is the percentage of people who see your ad and click on it. Cost per post engagement. An engagement is a like, share, comment, or save. So this is the amount of money that you have to spend on your ads on average before one of those four things is triggered. And then frequency is impressions divided by reach. So this means that the average person has seen the ad 2.55 times is what that would mean. So, and then of course, total amount of leads is going to be the results column. So. What does this mean when it comes down to reading the analytics? How do we make decisions? Just like with the sales campaign where we start off with the most accurate data column, which is ROAS, with the leads campaign, the most accurate data column is going to be cost per lead. Now, I do have to mention that the most accurate data column in reality is cost per sale, but that won't be in Facebook ads manager. So we'll look at just cost per lead. But if you have one campaign that is running, that is getting you a super low cost per lead, but a bunch of those people aren't turning into sales, but, and then you had another one where the cost per lead is really high, but a lot of those are turning into sales, which is actually very common that it could work out like that then you wanna pay attention to cost per sale. That's actually what matters. So just know that cost per lead, it, it is the most accurate data column when comparing apples to apples, but if you have one campaign that is running to a landing page and another one that's running to an instant form, instant form, you're always gonna get cheaper lead cost, which is not always good too, because a lot of times the more expensive leads they happen because you made the customer jump through more hoops. They filled out a longer application form or there was more qualifications displayed on the front end and they still became a lead. So you just have to know 
that cost per lead, it's not always conclusive that the higher it is, the worse that it is, or uh, vice versa. So as long as you keep that in mind, uh, just know that. So we're going to look at cost per lead. And then I'm going to look at these other columns as a means of verifying my theories. So let me go into one of the campaigns. And we're going to just look at these three ads. And I'm going to make a decision about this campaign live with you right now. So this one is getting $21 per lead. This one's getting $29. This one's getting $39 per lead. What I would say is, all right, which ad can I potentially turn off is a great question to ask. So what is getting the worst cost per lead is this one. Now, the next question I'm going to ask myself is, is this conclusive? Is this data conclusive or would I be pulling the plug too early? The fact that it's got 11 leads means that I would say that this is a fairly conclusive uh, stat and I can expect that my cost per lead will be pretty much in the same range. And it is quite a bit higher than the other ones. Uh, I, I like to say that after five leads or five sales, you're actually probably pretty close to what the data is going to be. So it does seem conclusive. Now, I might also check on these back end numbers just to see even further if it is winning or losing in some of these other columns. So CPM, this is something that we'd want to be low because that would mean that Facebook is giving us a little bit of a discount because they really like our ad. 63 bucks compared to this $41 CPM, I know that that's not that great. So it does cost a bit more to show this ad, which also reflects in the cost per lead. And then click through rate, I can see that it is the highest click through rate, right? If this was like a three or 4%, then maybe I would be a little bit more patient with it, but it is the highest. Yeah, at the same time, these numbers are the same, okay? 2.08 versus 2.06 versus 2.12. You basically wanna consider those the same. And then same with cost per post engagement. This is right in line with these other ones. So it's on a, it's an average result here. It's an average result here. It's a, a bit high of a result here. And then it is a really bad result in the column that matters most. So in this case, I would say, let's turn this one off. The other thing that I could ask is why? Why did I turn that one off? So I'm not gonna go into my client's video here, but you would go into the video and the thing that you're going to really analyze would be the very start of that ad. This is always gonna be the biggest impact as far as the creative goes. When it is an image, it's going to be what is that headline? What is that first thing that is said at the top? is where to point the finger at and you're you're going to be a lot more accurate thinking it's that rather than your caption or something else similarly with the video however it starts the first three to five seconds of that video is going to make the biggest impact so i could turn it off but i could also say well let me change the starting point of the video and then relaunch it is another thing that you could do all right sometimes you might think oh well that's such a great video i don't know why it's not doing well if you just optimize the starting point of the video, that would be an honest way to re restart it and give it another try. Now, in that case, I would duplicate the ad and then I would make the variation and then I would keep the data separate, okay? So it, it is very important that I would turn this one off still, make a new one, optimize the starting point and then continue. For now though, just looking at these three ads, I will absolutely turn that one off. Now, looking at these other two, I can see, you know, $29 is still a bit more than 21. Is that conclusive? It is at 10 leads. So I would say that it is decently conclusive. The uh, click through rate is also in the same ballpark. The cost per post engagement is the worst, but um, it's not that much worse than uh, the other one here. So, you know, it's, this is winning on click through rate. This is winning on cost per post engagement. This is winning on CPM. This is winning on cost per lead. This one is definitely the clear winner. I might not say, let me just run all my budget to this one quite yet though. So I'm going to let this one run out a bit more. If the cost per lead gets further and further away from this cost per lead, as soon as this one would get up to like more than 32, I'd probably say I'm gonna cut it or again, try to optimize the starting point of the video. 
And that's essentially just the process that you walk yourself down. You say, what is my theory? So can I cut this ad or should I make more ads like this one are essentially the two theories that you'd have on either winning or losing ads. Then once you have made that theory, you ask, is this data conclusive? If it is, then you can say, should I turn it off? And you can look at you know the, co- the amount of leads that you've got as one way to see if you're conclusive, but then also this backend data, if it doesn't look that great, and then it makes sense that it's it's not going to turn itself around. Now, one thing I could say with this one is the CPM is so high, but the cost per lead is not that bad despite the cost, the CPM being so high. So it, it does mean that I can maybe do something to make this ad a little bit more friendly to Facebook's algorithm, because if I can start getting more likes and engagement on it, that would be another way to get the CPM down. So I might say, how can I optimize the starting point of the video? But I could also say, how can I optimize the ending point of the video? Because that actually has the highest impact on whether someone engages with it. That like, that comment usually happens at the end. Once they've watched the whole thing, they say, oh, wow, I like that video. So making it more end more concisely, end on a higher note, end on a cooler note, and just seem like a a solid piece of content that came full circle and it hits is is a way that I could say it. Like, oh, that post hit, it, 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 it sparked emotion, it made you laugh. I wouldn't go crazy on just trying to make people laugh because a lot of times that can make you stray away from your core marketing message. But if you can add something like that that makes it just a little bit more of a likable post, even just having a cooler background, it could really do it for you too. So I could say, this sales pitch seems to be working really well. Let me go say the exact same thing with a cooler background would be another way to say, all right, that would be an, a, an honest way to improve this ad campaign. So the last thing is asking why. Why is it getting these results? And what can I do about it? Just as I explained some you know, mock-up scenarios there. Now, the other thing, to this is making sure that you have a back end lead program. I use Go High Level or ProBots is what my software company is. So it's powered by Go High Level. Basically, I, I can just get you Go High Level for half off instead of 97. You can get it through my link in the description for $49. You're just gonna have a pretty ProBots logo up at the top rather than Go High Level and you'll be able to contact me for help. But in here, you can see I have these different columns which I made and you can customize and you can just bring leads, you can drag and drop them between the different stages. And this is really key for being able to manage your leads. I've got my uh, you know, booked appointments, didn't show to the call. If I bring them over to didn't show to the call, they get an automatic, hey, where were you? You know, Reschedule at this link email. If they showed to call, but they didn't buy, I'm gonna bring them there. And that's going to give them an email that says, hey, here's all of my program offerings. Here's some more free resources. If they purchased, depending on what they purchased, it's going to get them uh, different materials that way too. So having this backend process is really gonna be the key because like I said before, cost per sale is what's most important. And when you have it in here, you'll be able to monitor all of your sales in a dashboard like so, and you can see your conversion percentage. So mine over the last 31 days, 16 grand generated at a 50% close rate, or no, 16K opportunity value, excuse me, turned into uh, 8,400 essentially in revenue because I had a 50% closing rate. And you can see at what point of the funnel people are getting stuck at. And you want to have a back-end CRM such as Go High Level. Basically, all of them can connect, but there's a reason why the entire marketing world is using Go High Level. So, If you don't have this part of it, I would highly recommend that you sign up at my link because I don't know anyone else that is offering it for 50% off. They could, but they don't. I just like to help people out. So this is only 49 bucks a month for the full Go High Level Starter software, and you'll be able to manage your leads and everything. So go to socialbamboo.com for more free resources, including booking a free call with me. I hope you got some great value today and be sure to comment below any questions you have. I will make sure to get back to you soon. See you next video.